Hey, uh, welcome to my talk today on efficiency preserving round compression compilers on MPC, or alternatively, do fewer rounds mean more computation? Uh, and this is joint work with Prabhanjan, Arvashi, and Abhishek. So let's jump right in. What's uh, multi party computation on MPC? It's a mechanism that allows parties to compute a joint function over their private inputs by executing a protocol. They do so by exchanging messages. And at the end of this protocol, everybody has the output. Since we're going to talk about round complexity of uh, these MPC protocols a lot, what constitutes a round? It simply uh, uh, constitutes of every participant sending a message. Uh, and for efficiency purposes, it's uh, best to minimize the number of rounds of interaction. Obviously, without any sort of security properties, this can be trivially done in a single round by parties simply sending their inputs to one another. Uh, so what is the security property that we need? Uh, intuitively, we want to say that uh, even misbehaving participants shouldn't learn anything beyond the output of the function. And uh, MPC, it turns out, comes in many flavors. Uh, so what's the setting that we are considering? We want an honest majority of participants, and we are working in the computational security setting. Uh, so meaning that anything, any protocol that's going to be talked about in this uh, you know, uh, talk is going to assume at the basis uh, existence of one-way functions. Uh, so in this honest majority setting with computational security, what do we know about the round complexity? And actually, it's actually well uh, studied and well understood. And uh, this follows from this really cool uh, recent line of work, which shows that uh, in the honest majority setting, there exist two round protocols. And this is just from minimal assumptions of one-way functions. And all these, uh, these works actually rely on a round compression uh, technique to achieve these two round protocols. What does that mean? So to start off, you have a multi-round pro protocol computing this function f that you want to compute. Say, let's just for simplicity say it's three rounds. It can be any arbitrary polynomial in many rounds. And to sort of compress this into two rounds, what you're going to do in the first round is you're going to exchange uh, commitments of the inputs. So the inputs that go into this functionality are you going to commit to and broadcast to all the other parties. And in the second round, uh, parties are going to gobble the circuit and send broadcast the gobble circuit to everyone else. Uh, so what purpose does gobble the circuit serve? It's going to act as a proxy for the parties uh, in this multi-round protocol. What does that mean? So it's best to help uh, look at the, what actually happens at the end of the round, uh, second round. Uh, at the end of the second round, all the parties uh, aggregate all the circuits that have been broadcast and the commitments and so on and so forth. Uh, and then structure up these uh, circuits as if they were the parties itself and locally execute the multi-round protocols, uh, sending messages between the circuits. So these garbled circuits act as the proxy for the parties themselves. And even though this local exchange of messages can be multiple rounds, this is entirely local and all the interaction has been done in advance. And uh, I'm sort of skipping over some of the details uh, because you, you're like, oh, how do you actually get the keys to execute the garbled circuits? And to do so, you actually run a two round protocol in parallel with these two rounds that I've described here to allow you to get the appropriate keys or labels for the garbled circuits. And then you can actually execute the garbled circuits. And this is a really cool uh, you know, technique that actually gives us two round protocols, uh, but it comes at a cost. Uh, and specifically that if we start, we, you know, you saw this multi-round protocol that we try to compress. And if you start with this multi-round protocol, which has a uh, total computational work uh, W, where uh, W is a function of the number of parties and the size of the circuit representing the function, uh, then all of these compilers actually give you this overhead of N square, multiplicative overhead of N square uh, when it comes to the total communication or per party computation um, in the resultant two round protocol. And this O tilde here actually hides, uh, you know, polylog factors in the number of parties or polynomial factors in the security parameter. Um, so what does this, this N square overhead mean in terms of, you know, starting off with uh, sort of best uh, or most efficient uh, compilers? So if you start off with, uh, you know, compilers in the semi on a setting where the total computational work is only O tilde of C plus some additive factor, then these existing uh, protocols give you, uh, you know, total communication or per party computation of N square C, it's O tilde notation, of course. 
So the question uh, we ask in this work is this, is this a multiplicative overhead actually inherent? Uh, can we construct efficiency preserving round compression compilers? Well, here efficiency, we're going to talk about total computation or per party, uh, total communication, sorry, or per party computation. Uh, so we actually show uh, positive results in this direction. Uh, so in the semi honest setting, we actually uh, remove this uh, multiplicative overhead and sort of uh, move this over as an additive overhead instead. And here, as you can see, um, this W actually doesn't depend on N anymore, but only polylogarithmically on N. And in the malicious setting, we get a three round protocol uh, with similar uh, complexity uh, for total communication and per party combination. The additive overhead is larger. Uh, of course, it's a three round protocol and not a two round protocol like uh, prior compilers. So for this work, we're actually going to focus only on the semi honest setting, but before I actually go into the details, let's actually see uh, what our results imply when instantiating the you know, most efficient protocols as we've seen before. So as I've already shown you, the prior work, even in the semi honest setting gives you an N square overhead. Uh, and our work uh, sort of gets rid of the n square. And as you can see, the additive overhead is into much larger than the additive overhead in prior works either. And the malicious setting, again, we have uh, n power six uh, additive overhead, which is you know, sort of comparable to n power four. Uh, but one point to note, obviously, is that um, the prior work malicious protocols are two rounds, while in our work, it's a three round protocol. Uh, I've said total communication and per party computation, you may ask, oh, what about total computation? And in fact, if you're willing to uh, sacrifice an additional round of uh, communication, you can actually get the total communication and total computation costs to be the same. Uh, but for this talk, I'm going to just focus on the total communication and per party computation. Uh, so how does one actually achieve these results? And a natural approach, which has been uh, sort of tried in tested strategy in uh, the past is this delegation of computation approach, where uh, all the parties that uh, want to compute a function elect a subset of them via some committee election procedure, uh, denote them the servers, and these servers are the ones that are going to do the heavy computation while the clients sort of just sit back and receive the output. Uh, so let's look at it in a little more detail. So let's see, uh, let's say here that uh, these three parties are the ones in the circles are, have been selected by some committee election procedure to be a part of the server. And they need to run a protocol computing some function F prime that's going to be related to F and we'll see shortly what that is. Uh, but obviously it needs to incorporate the inputs of all the other parties. And for input privacy, parties can't directly just send their inputs. So what they're going to do is going to secret, additively secret share their inputs and going to give each of the uh, servers only uh, a share of their input. Um, so I've shown an example where X5 is uh, additively shared among the three servers. So the servers now have uh, input into this new functionality F prime, uh, not just their input, but shares that all the other clients have sent to them. So what does F prime do? F prime just reconstruct uh, given all of these uh, all the inputs of the servers is able to reconstruct all the client inputs and then compute F uh, on the reconstructed inputs. So it's uh, clear that, you know, the servers seem to be doing substantially more work than the clients. And actually we show that this kind of uh, uh, balance or lack of balance is inherent. Uh, specifically, we show that if you want a protocol where the total computation cost is O tilde C, and note that our three round uh, semi honest protocol actually achieves this, not in two rounds, uh, but three rounds. Uh, but you can actually show that there are some functions uh, for which there does not exist a constant round balance protocol. Uh, so we actually show this in our paper and we use these MPC and that kind of techniques for these lower bounds. So this is uh, nat not just natural, but this uh, delegation and computation seems uh, inherent in some sense. Uh, but you know, uh, what's new to, uh, so, you know, this is a tried and tested strategy, like I've said before. So what's new in this setting? So the main challenge is we need to do all of this uh, delegation of computation and somehow manage to complete this in two rounds. Uh, so there are several challenges and I'm gonna mainly focus on two uh, high level challenges. One is that uh, in a two round protocol to achieve any sort of meaningful security and to avoid residual attacks, uh, the servers that are computing the protocol must commit to their entire input in the first round. 
Uh, but, you know, in the first round, uh, the servers are not in possession of the complete input because the clients have the shares of their inputs. Uh, so somehow the committee election and the input sharing must happen in the first round. So, you know, that seems challenging. And the second challenge is that, uh, you know, there's an artifact of existing compilers that they require private communication between the servers. Uh, and in the first round, uh, you know, the servers don't know who the other servers are, how they're going to privately communicate with one another. So our main idea is to develop a round efficient approach to this delegation of computation. And as a starting point, we are going to cons uh, consider uh, two round MPC protocols that have some special properties. And what are these special properties? Uh, the first is uh, the, what we're going to call decomposability of the first round messages. So the first round messages of all parties can be split as light messages and heavy messages. Uh, light messages, uh, as you sort of guessed from the name, uh, the computational complexity is independent of W. But more importantly, it's the messages that depend on the input. So light messages depend on input and uh, low cost, while heavy messages are independent of input, but the computational complexity can depend on W. Um, so that's great. That's our first property that we require from our special tool on MPC. And the second is that the private channel messages between parties are, are independent of the input. Great. So these are the two properties. Uh, you know, can you actually achieve these properties? And in our work, we actually show that you can take existing compilers and suitably modify it to achieve these properties. Okay, say so now you have a special tool on MPC. How are you actually going to make it work? So this is going to be a high level strategy. Uh, so the, the first step, uh, you know, parties are before the start of the first round, parties are going to toss uh, appropriately parameterized coins and self-elect into committees. And this is, you know, totally fine in semi-honest settings. Parties are going to toss a coin. If it turns out heads, they're saying, oh, you know, I'm going to be the server. Of course, nobody else knows who the other servers are. And they, they don't have time yet uh, to announce um, to the others that they are the server, but, you know, they locally know that either they're the client or the server. Uh, now the servers want to run a special MPC protocol computing F prime. If you recall, F prime was this function which reconstructed all the client input from the shares and computed F on the reconstructed inputs. And uh, one of the challenges we said, oh, you know, in this, uh, you know, uh, the servers need to compute uh, or commit to the input in the first round, and uh, they don't have the inputs. Uh, you know, how is how is it going? To Proceed. And to deal with this, we're going to help the servers compute the first round messages. Specifically, as you can see, the decomposability gives you, uh, you know, splits the messages into heavy messages that are completely independent of the input and the light messages which actually depend on the input. So all the clients are going to come together and help compute these light messages because they have parts of the input. And the nice thing about this is because the computational complexity of this is low, the overhead that this additional helping gives is also going to be low in the overall protocol. So that's nice. Uh, that then what about the second challenge about the private messages? So to this, uh, to deal with this, what you're going to have the servers do is they're going to broadcast uh, encrypted versions of their private channel messages. And, uh, you know, in the first one, they can do this because the, of this independence property, which says that the private channel messages between parties are independent of the input. So they don't really need to wait for uh, input shares from the client before they send out these private messages. So it's going to be broadcast, it's going to be encrypted, but we'll see shortly how to deal with this. Um, so for this uh, talk, I'm going to mainly focus on the third point. And we'll see that the ideas for point four are very similar, and I'll show you how at the end of this talk, how you can actually use the similar ideas to actually uh, get around um, or resolve uh, point four. Uh, so what about the helper computation by the clients? Uh, before we can get to that, let's actually see what even the clients have to help the servers compute. So what do the servers compute? In the first round, as we've uh, said multiple times, the servers compute light messages that depend on the input and heavy messages that are independent of the input. And in the second round, um, it computes the second round of the special MPC that depends on all the light and heavy messages of all the parties. Uh, so we can sort of ignore these heavy messages that are independent of the input for now, uh, because once the party knows that it's a server, it can actually compute these heavy messages and doesn't need to wait for the inputs from the client. So let's ignore this. We still have these other two issues to resolve, and we're going to resolve both of these together. 
So to do that, uh, every server Alice is going to delegate its computation of the second round of the special MPC to a circuit. So it knows that uh, it doesn't have all the information to compute the sort of first round and uh, first round light messages, for instance, that depend on the input. And by the time it gets the, it in the second round, it's going to be too late. So what it does, it, it uh, computes this circuit CI that's going to take in all the light messages from round one and then compute the second round message of the special MPC. And it sends this out in the second uh, round. And of course, to hide any of the inner workings of the circuit CI that might leak inadvertently private inputs of Alice, uh, Alice actually gobbles the circuit and sends this out. Uh, but you know, uh, at the end of the second round, everybody has the circuit and they want to evaluate the circuit and get the second round of the special MPC. Uh, to do that, there needs to be a mechanism to deliver the labels that help you actually evaluate the circuit. And the labels have to correspond to the light messages from round one. Uh, so this is exactly where uh, these clients uh, step in and help. Uh, so uh, they run, all the parties run a two round helper protocol. And what does this helper protocol compute? Uh, the clients actually have inputs to this protocol as well. So both the clients as always have input. Uh, so as like from the previous slide, we saw that the, um, server actually computes the garbled circuit. So the server inputs are pretty obvious. It's going to be the labels of these garbled circuits. But what are the client inputs? The client inputs are also obvious. Uh, these are going to be shares of their corresponding input XI. So the client I has input XI, these are going to correspond to the shares of XI. And what is the protocol output? The protocol takes all these shares, computes the light messages and outputs the label corresponding to these light messages. And as you can see that the protocol actually has all the information it needs to compute the labels corresponding to the light messages. And the server protocol actually has some really nice property. And uh, two of them are um, that it doesn't require knowledge of the servers because all parties actually run the protocol. It suffices for parties to individually know if they're the server or the client to determine what kind of input they have into this protocol. Otherwise, given that all parties participate, they don't really need to know if the other party is a server or a client. Right. And because the computation is only of light messages, the overhead that this generates for uh, running this helper protocol is low. All right. This is great. So we seem to have solved point three. Uh, so let's actually come back to point four where servers broadcast encrypted messages. How do the other servers then decrypt the messages? And for this, again, we're going to run a helper protocol. This is going to be the same idea as point three. Uh, we're going to run a helper protocol for servers to obtain appropriate keys to decrypt. But again, these uh, protocols only finish in the second round. So you're going to have to have some similar to before. Uh, you're going to have to have some sort of garbled circuit and the garbled circuit internally is going to decrypt this broadcast message given the labels for the keys. So again, this is uh, very similar to the approach that we've just discussed. So I'm not really going to go into the details. Uh, so the last thing I actually want to talk about is um, malicious security. Uh, so far I've spent this entire time talking about the semi security, but we said, oh, we have a maliciously secure protocol as well. Uh, and um, there's some, you know, the, the overlying, overarching ideas are the same uh, in the semi and semi malicious protocols. But obviously there are uh, you know, several challenges because uh, participants can uh, deviate arbitrary pro arbitrarily from the protocol. And uh, so for instance, we require the special MPC to be secured against malicious parties. And again, uh, we need the committee election process to be robust to malicious behavior. So for instance, if I have uh, N by two of the parties that are malicious, uh, they like if we follow the same uh, strategy in the semi setting, all the malicious parties are going to be uh, claimed to be in the committee. And then uh, if clients send their shares to the committee, you know, uh, input privacy is completely gone. Uh, so there are two ways to mitigate this uh, that we take in our work. One is we have an additional round for the committee election process, or we have strong setup assumptions, uh, specifically of like verifiable random functions or so on to actually uh, get malicious secure uh, to run on protocol, but uh, under these setup assumptions. Uh, so that's all I'll have time to talk about today. Um, you know, our paper is on ePrint. Uh, feel free to look at it. Uh, in case you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, that's my email address.
Uh, thanks so much for listening.